Uh, hi there. Uh, I thought I'd record just a really quick video to introduce you to some of the new features that are included in the new Pixel version 5.6, which has just been released. Uh, in this video, we'll take a look at a new way of writing RTD functions or uh, real-time data, so getting streaming data into Excel, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and I also want to show you uh, the new Polars integration, so you can use Polars data frames inside Excel with Pixel. And I also want to take a look at the new optional type. You can find all the details about this release and what's changed on the Pixel website. Uh, if you go to the support section and then documentation, then down the bottom here you can see the change log, uh, and this tells you everything that's changed in this version and also all the previous versions. If you're already using Pixel 5, uh, then this new Pixel 5.6 version will be backwards compatible. And if you're using earlier versions like 4 or 3, then just have a look at the what's new section, uh, and that tells you some important notes for upgrading. Now for updating Pixel to the latest version, you can go to the download page on the website and download the version that you want and install it manually just by uh, copying over the pixel.xll file. From the change log, uh, you can see each one of the versions has a little download link, which will take you to the download page and then you can select you know, what Python version and Excel version you need and download the add-in that way. Uh, but I wanna show you another way, which is using the Pixel command line tool. Uh, it's just, it's slightly easier, I think, than doing this uh, manual process. So to update uh, Pixel using the command line tool, uh, I've got a command prompt open and I've already activated my virtual end uh, Python 3.11. And if I run Pixel status, it prompts me to say that I'm using an out-of-date version. Uh, I won't install it just yet, but you'll see now it says that the installed Pixel version is uh, 5.5.4, whereas the latest one is 5.6. So uh, to install the the latest version of this pixel tool, I'll just do pip. So I do pip install upgrade pixel like you would any other any other Python package. That'll download the latest wheel and unpack that for me. So you see it's done that now, successfully installed 5.6.0. Now if I do pixel status, I don't get that warning about the tool being out of date, but the installed pixel add-in is still 5.5.4. So what I need to do is just do pixel update. Uh, now this is saying that, you know, Pixel's installed here already, and but I'm happy to uh, to update it, so I'll continue. And have I already downloaded it? So no, and then enter the details for the form. And once you get through that, it'll download the, uh, the Pixel XLL itself. See that downloading now. And then it'll unpack that, and now it's finally asking me, do I want to update from 5.5.4 to 5.6? So I'll say yes, and that's it. So now that's the, the Pixel package, uh, both the Python package and the Excel add-in uh, successfully updated. If I do Pixel status again now, we'll see that now it says 5.6.0 is installed. Okay, so with the update out of the way, let's start Excel and then we can uh, dive into some of those new features. I'm going to use a, a Jupyter Notebook to play around with these new features. Uh, if you haven't already seen Jupyter Notebooks in Excel, then uh, I'd recommend taking a look at that. Uh, you can find details on the Pixel YouTube channel or on the, on the Pixel website. So to start off with, I want to show you uh, the new right, real-time data generators or RTD generators. If you've used uh, real-time data functions in Pixel in the past, you will have seen that uh, it's kind of a nice way of getting streaming data, so stock prices or some kind of events uh, in real time into Excel. Uh, the the one drawback is that they're they're not difficult to set up exactly, but if you're not really that familiar with Python coding, you don't you know you haven't written classes and things like that before, they can seem a little bit daunting. And so using a generator is just a simpler way of doing that. To start with, uh, I'm just gonna write a generator so you can see what that looks like. So let's say pi generator. And uh, what I'll do is say for x in simple for loop. And then with a normal Python function, you return a value. With a generator, you yield a value. And I'll explain what this is doing. When we call this function, what it will do is step through each of this range and then yield the result each time. It's kind of easier to, uh, to show you than to explain it. 
So if I say pi generator here, it's returned this generator object. So if we say gen equals this, to get the next value of a generator, I can say next gen. And if I run this again, we've got as far as this yield thing, and then the generator's paused. And then if I do next again on the same generator, it'll go through the next iteration of this loop and yield the next value of x. So as I keep doing this, I'm doing one more iteration of the loop and getting the next value. So you can see it's kind of a nice way of uh, coding up a, a sequence of things. So like uh, they're typically used for infinite series, that kind of thing. Uh, but also we can use it when we want to have a series of values which we want to, to expose into Excel. So previously, if you wanted to, to get a real-time value into Excel, you'd have to write an RTD class and have a function that returns that. But we're going to use this generator that we've just written to get this value directly into Excel. So as usual, when writing an Excel function, we do from pixel import Excel func. And we'll decorate that with our Excel func thing. I will say, because I don't want to just like rattle through this iterator and yield them all one after another, I want to do it, you know, with a, a second or two in between. What I'll say is import time. And then after, after generating each one, I'm going to say time.sleep. So let's just sleep for a couple of seconds. Uh, and with my Excel func here, actually, I'll, I'll just run this and show you what it does to begin with. In Excel, if I do pi generator, it's returning me the generator as an object. So this isn't exactly what we wanted yet. Uh, this is returning it as like a cached object, which you could pass to other functions. To tell Pixel to use this generator as an RTD function, all we have to do is give it a signature, and we do that in the usual way. This one doesn't take any arguments, but for the return type, we use this RTD type. We can use it like this, or we can parameterize it to say RTD int if we want. Uh, both, both will work in this case, but we'll just use this. So now, when I call this function, now it starts the generator, and each time the generator runs, so it's just running in this loop, it notifies Excel and the value updates. And you'll see that we've got this value ticking in here. Excel's still responding, uh, and, and that's all it took. So it's kind of, it's, it's a nice way for streaming data in like this. Uh, but another thing that a lot of people use generators for is long running functions. So I'll show you that as well. Uh, let's say we had something which goes off and does some calculation or requests some data from a, a web server, something like that. And we just want to be able to notify the user that we're doing something. And then when that result's available, then we return the result. So I'll simulate that here by saying, first of all, yield working. So as soon as this generator runs, it will first of all yield this, then we'll do some long running task, which I'll simulate by saying time sleep five. Uh, and now we can return the results. So uh, results of calc, whatever that is. And actually this and the, this RTD thing is actually a string now, but we could just drop that and that will use a, just a generic var type. So now if I call this pi generator function, first of all, we get this working thing and then, you know, it's doing the calculation in the background or calling a web server. And then when the result is ready, it updates automatically. I didn't press F9 or anything. Uh, if you're in manual calculation mode, you would press F9, but in automatic calculation, that result just then, you know, appears in Excel. Uh, and this is like a really nice, concise way of writing this type of thing without having to, uh, you know, create a subclass of, of RTD like you had to in, in previous versions. All of that stuff is still available. So for more, you know, complex cases, uh, you can definitely still do all of that stuff. This is really just a shortcut. Uh, it also works with, uh, with async functions. So I could do exactly the same thing here. Uh, I could say async pi generator, uh, and instead of sleep here, because it's async, I would do a wait async io dot sleep. If you're not really familiar with, with async functions, then uh, don't worry about this too much for now, but just know that, you know, you can do it. So if you're working on some async stuff in the future, then, then know that this is available. Uh, and again, if we just do the same thing, this works in exactly the same way, but this time 
uh, it's using the, the async IO event loop. And there we go, you see it's, it's returned that result now. Next, I want to show you uh, optional arguments. Uh, if I just start by creating a function, let's call it optargs, taking a single parameter, and I say if x is none, otherwise just return some string, let's just do this, and give it the Excel func decorator as normal. So here, uh, I haven't made this argument optional yet, uh, that's what I'm going to do next. What I want to do as well, though, is just say that this x value is a string. So when I call this function, uh, let's see, we should see that you know calls it with this string here uh, and returns this here. But if I uh, leave this blank, if I delete this, what we'll see is it calls it with an empty string, and that's because I've told it here that this function ex expects a string, so it's not going to call it with none, even though uh, it's uh, it's empty, because Excel already converts that empty cell to a string before calling the function. What we could do is say, give it a default value here. Now when I do that, then when I call this, and I'll get my x is none, because you know there's nothing being passed in, so it uses this default value. And then if I change this back, then that all works. So so far, you know, nothing too exciting here. Uh, this is this is available in older versions of Pixel as well. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is kind of another way of, of doing the same thing, and then we'll look at something that's slightly different. So first of all, rather than having this default argument here, what I want to do is change this type to an optional type. So I'll say from typing, oops, optional. And then here, my type for x is this optional string type. So now, call this with hello, it works. And if I delete this, then it's now returning this x is none thing correctly because it knows that this is uh, an optional type. And kind of so far, you know, not so different from, from using the, uh, the default parameter. Uh, I can also, rather than using the type in here, I could do it kind of the old way with a signature string here. So here I would just say uh, optional string x. And this does exactly the same thing. Now I said this is kind of very, very similar to passing in uh, a default argument. Where it starts to get more interesting is where you start using lists of things. So for example, here I've got this uh, optional string thing, but if I wanted to pass in a list of things which might be a string uh, or, or might be missing, then it's it's not possible to do that using just a, a default argument. But what I can do here is say that actually this is a, should be a list of values, and I'll just, uh, what will I do? I'll just return the whole thing as a string here, just to see what's being returned. And now if I have a list of strings, so let's just say a, b, c, and then call my function with this array, this should now get converted into a Python list uh, of strings, which we can see it does here. And if one of these was missing, it now comes through as none. Without the optional thing, then this empty cell would have been converted to an empty string, but because we've actually said it's uh, an array of optional strings, now these empty cells come through as as none. So it's kind of the optional thing is uh, it's kind of a neater way of doing the uh, the default arguments in some cases. Some cases you want to use the default arguments, but particularly for arrays and types like that, uh, the optional thing is just you know quite a handy thing to have. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about was the new Polars integration. Now Polars is a data frame library for Python, a lot like Pandas, uh, based on Arrow. And in this new release, we have uh, support for taking Polar's data frames as arguments and returning data frames from Python functions directly to Excel, much in the same way that the, the Pandas integration works. If you've already used the Pandas integration in Pixel, uh, you should find this all pretty familiar because it works in, in a very, very similar way. Uh, let's start off by, from the Polar's website, I just want to pull up one of their examples. 
So, oh, the, the Polar's website is just, uh, let me go back, polar.rs. So if you're, if you've already started using Polar's, then, you know, you'd just be able to get on and use it in Pixel. Uh, if this is new to you, then, uh, you know, have a, have a look through this website and, and see what you think. So let me just pull up a quick Python example. So here we're just creating a data frame and then back in Excel, we can just use this. Say, so first of all, import polars PL. And we'll just use their example here. So I can see, you know, very, very similar to, to pandas where I've just created this data frame, the formatting slightly different, but this is all kind of as expected. And if I wanted to create a, an Excel function from this, I could say, uh, make uh, polars df. And we'll just return the same thing. Let me just copy and paste this. As always, use the Excel func thing to make it exposed to it to Excel. That's fine. I've got the right number of things there. Uh, and in order to uh, to make it convert correctly, I have to give it the the return converter to use. So here we're going to say pl .data frame. Uh, if you if you're not already aware, you can just use type annotations like this as well as using the the Excel func signature. Uh, so if I do that. Now let's get rid of these. Say, make polars df. Oops. And there we go. So now I'm getting, you know, my uh, my pandas data frame returned. Uh, sorry, my polars data frame returned to Excel just like that. And similarly, I could I could use it as an argument as well. So if I just say. Uh, BLDF arg. Let's just get the string of the type of X just to show what it is. And then I could say here, uh, rather than, you know, here I use the, uh, the type hint, but here I'll use the, uh, the signature version just to show you both. So what I'd say is data frame, same way as I would, as if I was using uh, pandas, but this time at a new parameter, which is kind polars. So this will construct a data frame from the argument with the data frame kind being polars. Uh, and yep, yeah, so if I run that, then back in Excel, pass this all in. You can see here it's, you know, it's constructed me this pandas data frame and, and returned that. Uh, I think we can actually just do, I think these string convert quite nicely as well. Uh, there we go. So we kind of got like this crafty string representation of the data frame, but it's really just to show you that it works in a very, very similar way to the pandas uh, converters that are there in Pixel already. So if you are using uh, polars in your code, then you know long you know you don't have to convert from pandas data frames to polars and vice versa all the time anyway anymore if you're using pixel you can just use these these converters directly so thanks for watching this video so far <laughs> that's everything i kind of wanted to cover on the new features of of pixel 5.6 uh, remember everything that i've shown you uh, is available on the website if you go to the change log you'll see you know a lot more detail about all the new features and each one has documentation so you can link through and you'll you'll find the docs for everything uh, and thanks to everyone who gave feedback on previous versions and has been in touch. And if there's something that you want to see in the next version or something that you try that you think, you know, could be better or, or whatever it is, then please do get in touch because, you know, it's, it's great to hear from people who are actually uh, using Pixel in real world applications. It kind of always amazes me that the number of different fields that people use, use Pixel for. So it's, it's always great to hear from you. Uh, and with that, thanks again. And, and I hope you enjoyed the video.